It's December, so you know what that means. It's the holiday season. It's Christmas time. You'll have one news network a fight back against a fictitious war on Christmas. You will have all the shopping you've got to do and all the putting up with annoying people and buying for ungrateful people, the weather getting crappy, all this other hot garbage. Humbug. But then, you remember it's the season of giving and caring and sharing and loving and all of that. And a certain football team continues to be in the spirit of the giving and the caring and the loving and the sharing. And it just warms the absolute cockles of my heart. And through the years of doing videos here about sports on YouTube, a lot of things have changed, but some things remain the same. And one thing that refreshingly and necessarily stays constant for me is that the Cleveland Browns organization truly is the gift that keeps on giving. Time after time after time after time. No matter how much the faces change, the results are still the same. And actually, to make a small correction to that, the results continue to get worse, if that's possible. But it is because the Cleveland Browns are figuring out a way to make it worse. So I'm sitting there minding my own business today and I just happened to check social media and I saw what went down and it was like an early Christmas present for me. And it's like the, the gift under the tree that's there early that you've peeked at ahead of time and you know what it is and you can't wait to open it. You want Christmas to hurry up and get there. Well, that's kind of what this was like to me. I wasn't planning on bashing the Browns until the end of the season, but they gave me this gift. And I must accept. I must. I must. If you ever wondered why I refer to the Cleveland Browns as the skid marks of the National Football League, today's announcements, today's decisions slash moves are only further vindication of said label. The Cleveland Browns are indeed the skid marks of the National Football League. If you thought the Bengals were the bungles of the 90s, the Browns have taken that over the past decade and a half and truly become the shit streaks of the league. They absolutely have. So today's big earth-shattering announcement by owner Jimmy Haslam is that Sashi Brown, the general manager, Moneyball in the NFL, him and Paul D. Podesta, they're going to be the dream team of suck after his 1-27 team. Think about this. Since Sashi Brown became the general manager, start of the 2016 season, this team has gone 1-27. Sashi Brown has been shown the door as he should have because he's an idiot, because he sucks, and the results on the field for the Cleveland Browns clearly indicate that he sucks. It's like a Sam Hinkie, in a way, accumulating all these draft picks with absolutely none of the redeeming qualities at all. At least you could say for the stupid things Sam Hinkie did, like drafting or trading up, to, or trading Drew Holiday, excuse me, to get Nerlens Noel, drafting a Michael Carter Williams, and passing on guys like Steven Adams and the Greek Freak in the 2013 draft, drafting Jalil Okafor in 2015 instead of Chris Stops Porzingis. I mean, it was Porzingis. He was right freaking there. Just draft the damn dude. At least you could say he hit on somebody like a Joel Embiid. Maybe you say a Dario Saric. And he accumulated a bunch of draft pick currency and future salary cap flexibility. Well, the Cleveland Browns just accumulate loss season after loss season after loss season. They accumulate a bunch of picks and then proceed to blow them time after time after time. The true definition of insanity we've heard is to do the same thing over and over again and expect the result to be any different. That's the Browns. That's the Browns. So, of course, the current general manager didn't even make it two years through. But honestly, you can understand why he was fired. Shouldn't have been hired in the first place. But once he was, you saw what he was about. He should have been shown the door after this year's NFL draft. But then the other part of this. Jimmy Haslam, the owner of the Cleveland Browns, makes a pronouncement after firing his general manager that head coach Hugh Jackson, yes, 
The same Hugh Jackson was hired before the start of the 2016 season. The same Hugh Jackson that has orchestrated a 1-27 stretch over the past 28 games dating back to the start of the 2016 season. This Hugh Jackson, who along with Sashi Brown, whoever you want to blame, it doesn't matter because they are all culpable here. They have helped orchestrate the worst two-year stretch of win-loss percentage in National Football League history in this modern era. The worst. And the Browns are staring down the barrel right now at 0-12 of potentially going 0-16. And you know what? I say, go for the gold, baby. You can't let the Lions have that honor alone. And it's a crime that the Browns didn't get there first. But they can get there next. And they've got four games to do it. But Jimmy Haslam is going to come out and announce that Hugh Jackson's coming back in 2018? Like, why do I call them the skid marks? Maybe it's trading out of position to draft Julio Jones in 2011. Maybe it's 2012 drafting Trent Richardson and Brandon Whedon. Maybe it's in 2014 passing on guys like Odell Beckham Jr. specifically to get a guy like Justin Gilbert and then trading up a little bit at the bottom of round one to go get a Johnny football. Maybe it's trading out of position in the 2016 draft to get Carson to not get Carson Wentz when I said they should draft Carson Wentz. Like, it was no option. There was no choice. It was layup right there for you. And then they also traded out of the position to draft Deshaun Watson this year. They passed on Deshaun Watson twice, technically. You could argue passed on Trubisky and Mahomes once. It's that type of hot garbage that makes them the skid marks. When they occasionally find a good player, then this regime just let them go in free agency for the fuck all of it. Didn't bother actually replacing people that they let go. You just let them go. So that way you could orchestrate trades where you give up $16 million to get a second round pick from the Houston Texans. Like that's how much Sashi Brown and the front office of the Browns suck. They gave up $16 million to get a second round pick. No, a second round pick is not worth $16 million. And that's the money that they had to pay Brock Osweiler and guaranteed money this year in order for that trade to happen. $16 million for a second round pick. That makes you skid marks. And in general, as an organization, you're talking about since they came back into being in the 1999 season, they've had eight general managers and nine head coaches. Whereas you look in a division where the Pittsburgh Steelers in that same time frame have had two general managers and even their current general manager, Kevin Colbert, took over in 2000. So he's been there now 18 seasons. They've had two head coaches, Bill Cowher and Mike Tomlin, both of whom have won Super Bowls. And Tomlin's taken the team to two of them. The Baltimore Ravens, again in your same division, in that time frame. Three head coaches, Marsha Broda, Billick, Harbaugh. Billick and Harbaugh both won Super Bowls. And the entire time you've had one mastermind, former Cleveland Brown, of course, Ozzie Newsome. He's been running the show for 22 seasons in Baltimore. You know, the original Cleveland Browns. They've had one guy orchestrating things for 22 seasons, and in that time they've had three head coaches since 1996. Just think about that. And since you want to go into 99, they've had two of them. It was Billick and Harbaugh, and each of those guys won a Super Bowl. And even the Cincinnati Bengals, we talk about the Bungles of the 90s. They've had one general manager, and granted, it's Mike Brown, and that says a lot about Mike Brown in the fact that he won't let go of that power. But ultimately, the Cleveland Browns look up at Paul Brown's son and say, you're my daddy. And they've had three coaches in that time frame, just three. And Marvin Lewis, for all the things we could say about him going back to 2003, is now 15 seasons. He's at least taken them to the playoffs, what, seven times? The Browns, since they came back into being in 1999, have been to the playoffs, I believe, one time. Had a couple of winning seasons, and that is it. Those are blips on the radar. Those are complete and total aberrations. And you look at how this has happened, and it's been a long, steady period of incompetence and pure stupidity in terms of front office moves, in terms of head coaching hires, and so forth. And it all comes down to ownership. And as bad as the Lerner family was... Jimmy Haslam III is worse. His brothers, the governor of Tennessee, this is a guy that bought the team in 2012. You say, where do I recognize that name from? Yes, have you ever heard of the Pilot Flying J scandal where the company 
was intentionally bilking truck drivers and truck companies out of rebate and rewards money to the tune of millions and millions of dollars. Pilot Flying J openly committed fraud and ultimately admitted to it. And furthermore, there were recorded conversations, I believe it was in 2012, with the executive in charge of sales where he said that Jimmy Haslam not only knew about the scheme, but was for it all along. This is the guy that the owners unanimously approved to buy the Cleveland Browns. This jackass, this jerk, this criminal who should be in prison is instead making Cleveland his penitentiary of suck. And since Jimmy Haslam has taken over in 2012, you have four general managers, four head coaches. The team's record is 20 and 76. And it's shaping up to be very soon about to be 20 and 80 over a six season stretch, five season stretch, whatever the hell. My math's not even right. And at this point in time, was it 2017? Who cares? They suck that bad. You get the point. They've lost a ton and won very few. Whereas they have other organizations in their division show them that you put competent football people in charge of your football operations. They find decent, competent head coaches and you get stability in your organization. You enjoy some form of consistent success. Instead, the Cleveland Browns turn things over, over and over and over again because of incompetent leadership at the very top, specifically now Jimmy Haslam, makes poor choices in terms of team presidents and general managers, which leads ultimately to horrible head coaching hires. But what he said today is the height of stupidity and the height of ridiculousness. If your general manager was bad enough to where you felt you needed to fire him before the season was even over because this team, since he took over, was 1-27, how in the hell do you not fire the coach along with him? How can you single out one so much over the other? And furthermore, if you're going to say, well, Hugh Jackson was for Carson Wentz, Hugh Jackson was for Deshaun Watson, well, Jimmy Haslam, you stupid piece of crap, then maybe you should maybe just do things the way normal football organizations do, and they hire general managers first, who then are allowed to pick their head coaches. They don't hire head coaches and then later on try to find a general manager and not even know whether or not the two can be a cohesive unit and work together or even be close to on a similar page. And clearly, clearly Hugh Jackson and Sashi Brown were not. And as much as Sashi Brown failed as a front office executive, you look at the on-the-field product this year, and you could specifically point to, specifically on the offensive side of the ball, with the botched handling of Deshaun Kaiser and the offense in general, that Hugh Jackson is a failed NFL head coach, specifically on the offensive side of the ball, period. And this idiot is going to sit there and give Hugh Jackson more stability by allowing him to come back in 2018. Now look, I'm not for firing for the sake of firing. And at some point in time, this cycle of always firing people has to stop for Cleveland because it's a major part of the problem. There was no vision, there was no direction, there's no consistency of message and leadership in the organization. But the problem is, if you always hire people that are in over their head, you always go lowbrow, you always go for these idiots, which is exactly what this organization does, see Farmer and Petten, see other guys before them. Like, think about it this way. When this organization came into being, the start of the 99 season, they thought the coach that was really exciting was Chris Palmer. Like, if you want to understand everything about the Cleveland Browns, very early in the draft process in 99, they were trying to choose between Tim Couch and Achilles Smith, and they had almost immediately eliminated Donovan McNabb from consideration. Just think about that for a second. It's almost like the Donovan McNabb curse in a way. They didn't take the right guy, and it screwed him for almost two decades now. But why in the hell would you show loyalty to a head coach that has led your team to a 1-27 record since the start of the 2016 season? Furthermore, why in this type of situation where there was a clear power struggle would you side with anybody? Why would you side with a head coach that has led your team to a 1-27 record since the start of the 2016 season? Who fucking does that? Who? Guy, guys who lead companies that commit fraud and know about it and then have to pay the federal government a fine because they get busted out on it in order to avoid getting prosecuted as a company. That's the type of guy, Jimmy Haslam. 
And unfortunately for Cleveland Browns fans, based off of everything that you've seen, it's not going to get better anytime soon. Because what type of potentially credible, legitimate general manager candidate is going to want to come to Cleveland, deal with this schmoz of an organization, deal with this incompetent idiot of an owner, and then to top it all off, have to be sit there and forced to take a huge Jackson who's about to lead his Browns team potentially to an 0-16 season to follow up on a 1-15 season? Who fucking does that? You're tying your own hands to spite yourself. As Owen Hart would have said, you're kicking your leg out from your own leg because you're a moron. Jimmy Haslam is a moron. If Sashi Brown had to go, fine. Then Hugh Jackson should have been shown the fucking door. There is absolutely nothing in terms of redeeming qualities or progression of the team that indicates that Hugh Jackson was so much better at his job compared to Sashi Brown, where he deserved to win a power struggle. Just think about how stupid the skid marks are. And this is why they're the skid marks, ultimately. Jimmy Haslam's the owner. He is a skid mark among skid marks of owners in the National Football League. And he allowed a head coach of a 1 in 2017 to win a power struggle over the general manager that helped orchestrate and be the architect of said 1 in 2017 since the start of the 2016 season. That's what the Browns do. They worry about head coach, general manager, power struggles for a team that went 1 in 15 last year and is currently. 0 and 12. I'm sorry, Cleveland fans. At least you can say this. LeBron and the Cavs are championship caliber. The Indians are a contender. Because that's all you've got to grasp onto. You have absolutely zero reasons to be confident. You have zero reasons to show any faith in this organization. Because ultimately, Jimmy Haslam is calling the shots. And to sit there and say that you're going to keep Hugh Jackson and force that upon somebody else heading into 2018, you're going to continue the same cycle more likely than not because you're not going to open up the purse strings and really sit there and throw out big time money to actually compensate somebody to sit there and say, okay, we give a shit now all of a sudden. We know we suck and it's time to change that. Like if you're the Cleveland Browns and you had competent, sound leadership, your first call is to Robert Kraft and the New England Patriots and call me crazy, but you're offering Bill Belichick $20 million a year to be the head coach and general manager and you say that is a shit ton of money way above and beyond Bill Belichick is the greatest coach of all time if you want to at least show that you were serious then you throw more money than anybody could ever imagine going to a head coach and you dramatically and drastically change the market and you make a statement and say this organization screwed up two plus decades ago when we moved out of town and we let Bill Belichick go we want you back because we know you could do it your second call or if not to Belichick, your first call should be to Ozzie Newsom, the Cleveland Brown Hall of Famer. Bring him back home. You throw at him five times the money that Steve Bishotti is paying him in Baltimore, if not more. The point is you've got a crap ton of money. It's time to start using it. But of course this organization is not. And I'm not saying those guys would come because they'd be idiots to come unless they were given even more money. And then at some point in time they want to sit there and really be able to pat themselves on the back and turn this thing around. The point I'm getting at is though they're going to go after somebody else's director of pro player personnel and not even from a, a great team or a great organization. It's going to be some second-rate bullshit. Then this team's going to hire some type of second-rate bullshit head coach. It's going to be the same cycle of suck. And two years later, we're probably going to be right back in the same position again. Jimmy Haslam is an idiot. The Browns as an organization are the laughing stock. And the skid marks, you could argue, of not just the National Football League, but all North American professional sports. They just had a power struggle where the owner sided with the head coach for a team that has been 1-27 in since the start of the 2016 season. A team that has passed on Carson Wentz and Deshaun Watson in the last two drafts. A team that is going to try and start spinning to you this bullshit about... There's absolutely no reason to trust the process because this team continues to do the same idiotic things run by the same types of idiotic people and the results stay exactly the same. But I'm not complaining ultimately. I'm thankful. I'm very thankful this Christmas season because once again, the Cleveland Browns have given me a gift, a blessing. And I know regifting is usually frowned upon in civilized society. But I don't mind this regifting, and frankly, I love it. 
and I want more, more, more. We should start calling them the Cleveland shits because that's what they are. They are forevermore the skid marks of the National Football League.